Welcome back guys, here we are now with part 8 and I'm starting this directly after finishing part 7. Um, I think you probably do want to see how this all goes because I think I've got some good ideas about how to get this together. Um, obviously you don't have to follow me at all, you can do it the instructions way if you want, but uh, I think I think I've come up with some... Oh, that bloody peg would stay on there. I think I've come up with some pretty good ideas. Um, so the object of the exercise here is what we're trying to do is get this upper cover fitted and and have a nice neat job out of it. Um, we, If you go back and have a look at part seven, we did lots of sanding and trimming and adjusting and stuff and, uh, you know, to get this all to go nicely. Now, what I've actually done on the back here, as you can see on here, well, you can't see because the tape's in the way. Make sure you get a lovely interface between those two parts there between this part and this part they're they're kind of they're both stepped make sure they go together nicely and they should be sort of fairly flush uh, you can see you can easily get it on top like that rather than having it actually in there with it and then if you run your nail i don't have any nails because i bite them because it's a disgusting habit but um if you run run a tool across there you can feel there's a step so what i'm going to do is actually remove this again Okay, I'm kind of glad in a way because I've already done this, but I'm glad I haven't done enough so I can show you what I'm doing. Get all this tape off of here, which is a nightmare. Oh, come on. This is going to get launched, I tell you. This, this model is going to get thrown across the room, I'm sure of it. I just hope the gun's a lot better than the truck is. Because um, this truck is just diabolical um right so it needs to sort of sit on top of there and as you can see with it correctly positioned on there it's not quite flush it's a little bit got a bit of a step there so what i'm going to do is come along with my knife and just go in and scrape what i'm doing here coming in with the knife and going into the corner and scraping to remove plastic from the face to allow it to go deeper in and I'll just do a couple of passes the other way just to make sure we don't have a, a lump on this end okay what's that what it's doing is thinning thinning out that area on there and it will allow this panel to sit deeper onto there and as you can see we can get it now pretty much flush it's still there's still a bit of a step there so I'm going to take a little bit more off this time I'm going to go each way As you can see now we can get it on there and it's flush there's no step that's what we want so we've already done the same on this side okay now what I'm going to do no I'm not, no, I'm not going to do I was going to wedge that away but I want to use it to position the sides but what I'm going to do here now is fit this rear panel but I'm only going to glue it Please go in, for God's sake. Just go in. Right, there you go. You can see how awkward this all is. It's just a joke. Like I say, I'm not knocking dust work. How, how, how else could you have done it, you know? You could have moulded it in one piece, I guess, but then you wouldn't have all the detail unless you had loads of expensive slide moulds. But there you can see that we've got that taped in place. So I'm going to tape it in place here to make sure it's nice and level. Okay, so we've got it nice and level on that top edge there. And then we're going to also tape it on this side. You can hear it kind of click into place to make sure it's in the right position. 
so that it's all flush and everything. If we hold it there, tape it, just hope it stays. And obviously the main thing we're concerned about here is having it nice and flush across the top. The way it fits the sides is really slightly unimportant at this stage. Tape here. There we go. So that is that. We've got to make sure that it stays in and we don't get that step. There we go. That'll be more important when it comes to gluing it rather than now, but I would like to have it correctly positioned. And what I'm going to do now is actually glue this back wall, glue this rear wall to this and only that. So I'm going to have to use a drop of quick setting. See, it needs to be square and it's it's the tape is pulling it out it's because of this bloody side these bloody sides they've got too tight a curve in them they keep wanting to pop under and it's pushing that back downwards it's a effing pain in the ass is the best way i can describe it so as soon as you let it go it wants to pop back in So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a clamp on here and see if I can put a little bit of pressure on there. Just to keep it up against that bottom face. There we go. Right. So, with that clamped in place, I'm going to glue on that bottom edge and only on that bottom edge. I don't want any glue to get on the sides at all. The glue will run at the sides, that's okay, that's absolutely fine, but what I don't want it to do is, I don't want to glue it to here yet because I want to make sure it's all correctly positioned. You can see here now, when you look up close, you can see these sides have popped in. They want to, they keep wanting to pop in and underneath the top because they've got two tyre radius on them, they have to come out. So, um, all these things are sent to try us. Okay, so we'll let that dry now and um, come back. Okay, so as long as it takes to make, how many is it, five Mustang videos and do a book review, that's how long this has been drying. So there we are, so that should all be nice and firm by now. So we've got the sides glued in there, level with those edges there, and we've got the rear panel glued on. So the sides, the sides here are still free, nothing is glued to the top, so the top is free to come out. So, what I want to do now is get these sides glued here nice and level. So I think what I'm going to do is take the top off because basically this is glued solid to here and this is glued solid to here. So really what we need, what we should be able to do now, because it's all taped together and we know it will fit, because it's going to be a lot easier to sort of hold and pull these about when they're not all taped up and I can't have them all taped up while I glue them. So let's see if this works. This is, uh, like I say, I do this and then if it doesn't work, you don't have to. So, um, and I've just had notification, in fact it's pointless saying this, I've just had notification from Hanance that my order model 88mm gun is on the way. But you'll see the review before you see this video, I expect, so... Here we go. Right. So we can I think we can actually remove this top panel completely. So we'll get this tape off. Make sure we don't scratch our nice grey paint in there. Tape off of there. Get that tape off of there. 
and that piece from there and then this top there we go, should just fall off so there we are so this is basically how they're telling you to build it put the sides on put the back on and then fit the top but as you've seen already from my fettling then that is not necessarily going to work so we know that with this all joined in properly you can see that these sides they want to sit this way they don't want to sit back now I don't want to pull them because I don't want to change I'm worried that if I pull them I might just sort of bend here so what will happen is I'll have the same radius there but we'll have a bend in it there and then the top won't fit so what we need to do is somehow hold these in place solidly and glue them and also make sure that it remains flush on the top and bottom surfaces now that's going to be easier said than done because it's quite a quite a lot of force required to get them to do that so if we a straight edge push that down on there that should make sure the top is flush so what I want to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to get a drop of quick setting super glue and I'm going to put a few drops down the back and let that dry to hold it in place because as you can see as soon as I let it go you can see we have virtually no step there at all as soon as I let it go we've got a great big step because it wants to go in I mean we do have a step there which I will blend in but I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a step there actually there might be a there might be a weld line there or something we'll have to have a look at some photos what I'm going to do is grab some super glue some instant super glue so this cheap stuff here is the sort of stuff that's good for, for doing bits like this because it dries very very quickly but it's very very brittle so I don't like using it in general but I will use it um, for stuff like this because what I'm doing is just tacking it in place and then I'm going to get a weld action in it so it doesn't matter if it's brittle and it breaks I just really want speed so um, I don't want speed the drug I want I'm, I'm after something that works fast yeah I think you knew what I meant right so what we'll do is get this together and hold it it's no good taping it because the tape isn't strong enough but we'll get that together and hold it in position where we want it top nice and flush yeah and what I'm going to do is just put some super glue down the back I'm going to put a decent drop down there because obviously a tiny little spot is just going to fracture because it really is quite a, a strong needs quite a strong hold so I'm just doing the top and then we'll do the bottom after so as you can see there just to the right of my thumb there's hardly any step there at all I'm going to hold that and let it dry. I'm not going to use accelerator because it'll make it too brittle. So I'm going to hold that there for a few minutes and let it dry. There we go. A couple of drops of super glue in the back held that in place. And then I've put extra thin down this side and also down the back. And then what I'll do when this is dry, give it a good couple of hours. I'll get down the back with a sanding stick. And I think I'm going to put some plastic card in there just to bridge it. Because it is under quite a lot of, especially this one, it really wants to curve round. I'm not worried about the top because it's going to be supported by the by the, the top going in it's going to sit in there like that but um, I'm worried about the bottom just cracking because as you can see the contact area is is next to nothing so um I'd hate for it to crack you know if the super glue has gone in there and really penetrated the joint and sort of left no room for the uh, extra thin to do its thing then we need to make sure that we've got some support so I think I'll just put a couple of little squares of 20 thou plastic card in behind here um, as long as it's not going to foul anything we'll have to check that first but uh, we've also got this, this box under here that's got to fit in and that's quite a snug fit so what we'll have to do is make sure that our plastic card of course this doesn't actually touch the top does it um, it's lower down than the top but um, what we'll have to do is make sure that our plastic card doesn't go any narrower than them. So what I'm going to do is grab my marker and I'm just going to put a, a 
dot there so I know to stay away from there and that those dots will remind me right so once again you can guess what we're going to do guys we're going to go away and wait for this to dry yay nice isn't it okay so now I just want to cover um just a couple of minutes on what could go wrong if you followed the build sequence of the way they've got it here of putting the sides on um, then fit in the back and then you come along and like ages and ages and ages later after doing all this work you fit the top so um, first things first if you've left this rear end on the sprue and you've left this on the sprue and you just come along and fit these side panels um, yes they fit lovely around here but you do have plastic to remove from the top here as I already discussed in part six discussed in part six so you've got plastic to remove from there plastic to remove from there I have also had to scrape uh, a slight amount of plastic from there to get this to sit down into there nicely if you remember I also had to sand the top of these down to get the top to fit down nicely now that's going to be extremely difficult to do once you've got the sides on so if you come to fit the top, you know, a couple of days after you've done all this, or the sides, and you find the top is down, you've got to now sand this level somehow without damaging these edges around here. Um, so yeah, so basically you, you would come along, you would fit the sides. You would also find that the sides are being held apart because this part here, which is the top of the assembly. So I've already described, I've already said about this before. I'm going back over what I've already said, but I want to make sure that anybody watching this understands so I can try and help them not fall down this great big hole. Um, so this part here, this is B4. What's that one off? This, this is B4. B4 is actually narrower than this part here, which is B5. So B4 is actually the correct width. You can see that the sides are glued on here. Okay, and it's the correct width. I've had to sand away the sides here to get it to go in. It's wider. So make sure you um, do that. If you don't do that, your sides are going to be like this. And then when you come to fit the top, again, you're going to have problems with the fit. Um, and as I say, if you don't get this all fitted in, then when you come to the back end, if you just glue these sides on, there is nothing other than two tabs in here. Sorry, in here that go up between this B4 and B5 floor, so there's, there's a gap there. There's two tabs in there that go in, and that's all that locates it vertically. But they hold it too high. So basically you need to remove some plastic to allow them to cut these sides to come down. It's only a touch, but you need the sides to come down. So if you glue this in, then when you come to fit this panel in the back, you won't get these sides to line up because you've glued them, they're all going to be too high, and you're not going to get this neat edge around the top here. Um, this is a very positive fit. It fits onto the back of this part here. But the, also the problem I had, now this could be my fault, although if you look at all of this, it's all butted up together. But I had to sand some material from the end of this part here, from the back of B5, to allow this rear panel to come forward. So as you can see now, the way I've, you go back through part seven, and the way I've done this is having it all taped together and gluing it bit by bit by bit and going around. And basically now we have a top that fits in there absolutely perfectly. You can see how good the joins are. Once that's cemented, we'll get a little bit of um, extra, th not extra thin, um, super glue in there, sand it back, and we'll have a completely and utterly seamless joint. And that's what I'm looking for. I can't see any seams on the actual um, on the actual real photos I've got. I've managed to get a step in that one. That's a shame. Never mind, it can all be dealt with the sanded back. Just make sure we cover up those hinges and everything. Don't remove that detail. The spare wheel is going to go in there. Um, I can't remember now which one of these is the spare wheel. But there's one with a hole in where the tread's all knackered. Um, you can guarantee I won't get it when the camera's on, can't you? You just absolutely guarantee that. It'll be the last one I pick up, you watch. Let's just, we've got one more to go after this one. Oh, I can't find it. But anyway, we've got a spare wheel to go in there. And as they, as they say in the instructions, fit the drum brake here. Don't do that, this is what Jeff said. 
don't do that. I mean, why would you have a bloody drum brake on a spare wheel anyway? Duh. Um, but basically, that's going to go in there. So if you're going to have the door open, you're going to see the tread. But if you don't have the door open, then you're not. Why would they have the door open anyway, even if they are in combat mission or on the road or whatever? So, so basically, um, probably just glue those doors shut. But going back to this top, you know, really... It really is worth taking your time and, and getting it all taped down nicely and and really, really good. So, um, yeah, really worth doing. All right. So um, I'm going to now go on and take this all down. Because what I've done here, I've, 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 I've come in, I'm not going to lie. I've come in and I've got the end of my knife and I've just scraped a slither of plastic from there. To allow this to sit down in deeper so I get it nice and flush all the way around. And what I want to do now is get it all fitted and get this front end glued first because that's the one that's going to be the most difficult to repair if we do get any issues. And you can see that it wants to sit out of square, it, it's kind of it needs to be pulled in to get it flush on the front. Okay, so I'm going to do that now. What I'm going to do is get tape and I'm going to tape it down. And pull it forward at the same time. Right, so do the same over here. We'll grab a bit of tape. This orange tape is very good. It's very very sticky. And it's great for assembly. So I'm going to stick that on there. Push it down firmly on the plain bit. And I'm going to pull that over. And pull that tape down. And that will hopefully hold it in position. So that's the front edge done. And then we can grab a bit of tape here and pull the back down like so. Have another bit here. This is all used tape. It's all second hand. No point in throwing away good tape. Pull that down there. Okay, so that's that sort of held in position. And all I want to do is glue this front end. So you can see now we need to pull that down slightly because it's sort of Pulling up in the middle, so I may be able to get a close peg on there. Probably better off using a um, a Rebel Hobbies clamp just to hold it down. It doesn't need to be a load of pressure. We don't need to bend it out of shape. But as we can see here, you see that this is why we tape over. You can see here that that one that one there had gone up over the top. Okay, to make sure that this top is over the top of this panel and inside the side panels. That's the way the kit's designed. All right, so you can see we've got a lovely joint along there now. So what I'm going to do is grab some extra thin and just run some along there. I'm going to run some along there. Get some in the middle. Make sure we don't get too much towards the outside or it's going to capillary underneath that tape and make a right mess. Okay. So there we are. That is the top glued down at the front. And obviously we will go around it all again to really make sure we've got a nice strong joint because we don't want it to all start coming apart. But what we can do here is get a peg in there. And get a peg in there. That will hold all that together. Right, so I'm only going to glue that front end because that's the most important bit. And then the rest of it we can pull about and we can fill and do whatever we have to. But you can see how this fits in here. It's bloody lovely. But you really do need to take your time with this, guys. This is not something you can just tear into. Now, for clamping this back here, I think I'm going to have to clamp a straight edge on there or something. It just wants to bow out, look, but it's not going to stay. Maybe we'll have to do the super glue again. But I'm going to leave that now to dry. See you later. Okay, so that's a few hours later now. I've been on the Moss live stream, and you can see that that front edge there is all glued up now, nice and solid. So that's all cool. Right, so what I want to do now is concentrate on this back end. Now, this back end, as you can see, it's a little bit baggy. So what I'm going to do is tape it. Now, if I tape it, the problem with that is, if I tape it, um, if I tape it like this and then put glue, it's, the glue's going to capillary over the tape. So what we're going to do is a little trick here. I'm just going to grab a cocktail stick 
and just pull the tape over the cocktail stick and then just roll the cocktail sticks forward slightly. As you can see, it's pulling it back, but the tape is not actually touching the joint. So now I can get some Tamiya Extra Thin and I'm just going to put a drop there and a drop there and make sure it doesn't go near that cocktail stick. If it does, it's not the end of the world because it is a flat plane surface and it'll be easy to repair. But there we go, we've got, we've now got our extra thin in the gap, away from the cocktail stick and away from the tape. So again, we can leave that now to dry. Um, and the reason I'm doing this in stages is I don't want to make a big gooey mess. So basically we've got the front glued in, we've got the back glued in and now the sides can be pulled in with clamps or tape or whatever. And we'll get those all glued in and then we'll go around with some super glue afterwards and uh, get this seam got rid of. So um, you can see we've got our bits of plastic card in there. I can't remember if I showed you there or not. But that's going to make that back end a lot stronger. So uh, there we are. That's all going to be um, coming together nicely. So, see you in a minute. Well, second for you is going to be uh, a few hours for me. Just making sure that panel's glued in at the top. There we are, right. All right moving on. Um, as you can see, we've got a few clamps on here. So, just not clamping, just sort of just holding it. It's literally just gentle finger pressure. So, you see, I glued that across the back. That's all dried. I've now gone in around the sides. And then with these clamps, just actually put some pressure on the sides just to keep them square and everything so now as you can see on there it's all glued up and we have a absolutely perfect joint um, there is a very slight step there which we can deal with it's not an issue um, I need to check my reference pictures again to see if there is actually a weld seam or something here um, I should imagine there probably is but I can't see anything in the photos but uh, we shall see but um there we go that's our back end now that will now fit onto here and with a little bit of cleanup, we can see that we have a perfect fit there. Now, if you didn't do this the way I've done this and you just went on and glued the sides on, you will find these sides have been pushed out because that floor is wider. So basically, you know, have a check, have a dry fit, have a good look. You can see this all fits on here beautifully. We've got steps in here. We've got steps in here and it all goes together. The location points on here are just ridiculously tiny. They could have made them bigger, um, but they haven't. So what I would like to do here is glue this together like this now, and then glue this onto the back of the cab and have a complete one piece body that just drops on, as you've heard me say so many times before. So we shall see. I definitely want to do, do this joint here so I can deal with all the, 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 the blending or whatever is required down here. But um, you can see across the bottom, if I fit this in nicely in here, you can see we have a little bit of a gap at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure you can make that out, but I can. There is a tiny little gap there, but that could easily be filled in from the back with a drop of super glue, and that'll be that gone. But, um, yeah, the, the fit of everything is, is quite su superb. So um, I think this will probably be the next step is getting this glued onto here. And quite knows how, I don't, I don't quite know how I'm going to do it, to be honest. I think maybe a couple of pegs on there. Um, or will that just collapse? No, it does stay. So can we... And then we need to get a straight edge on here and check. Um, it needs to be these pegs need to be out of the way. We've got a step here, remember, so it's not going to be touching the floor at the back. But we need to make sure that it's dead straight. I guess we could actually um, lay it on the chassis. Uh, but the trouble is those pegs will be in the way. So I don't really know. Maybe we could peg it here. Take it there and there. That seems to work. And then we could place this onto the chassis, like so. And those, those lugs there are all we have for alignment. 
quite sure how this is going to work out. We shall see. Hmm. Interesting. But, uh, not very positive at all, as you can see. Uh, but if we get this bulkhead in place, this this bulkhead here, and glue, glue it to that, then that will actually help. So what I may do now is get that glued to that and then get that all clamped up on the chassis so it's all nice and square. But the object of the exercise is to have a one piece body that we can just lift off. So in it nice clean neat joints and we can get everything painted grey and all done nicely. So hmm, that's not that's not the best, is it? All we've got locating it is that tab there, which doesn't hardly even touch that crossbar because it's. If you look on the chassis, you've got these lay these raised these raised pads that the body sits on, and then that crossbar there is is even sub flush with the top of the chassis. So that lug on there is really doing absolutely nothing. These two on the sides just about touch the chassis. I think the designer forgot that this is raised away and the, the tab need to be longer. But hey. There's lots of issues like that on this thing. We have a look about this and then I'll uh, think about it and I'll come back. Okay, so method in my madness here. Right. We've got this floor now attached to the chassis with four closed pegs, as you can see. We've got two clamps holding the cab down. If you clamp the cab in the middle, it kind of all closes up. If I clamp it on the back, it pulls it back. If I clamp it on the front, it pulls it forward. So front and back. Nice and square, I've got this butted up against there, and we've got all the little tabs on the back of that bulkhead lined up with these little pieces in here. So, we can now come in and add some cement and glue the cab to, the, to this piece here. The reason I want to do that is I want to cut those lugs off the back of that bulkhead so that we can push everything forward up against the front. So, what I'm going to do now is add cement to here. Yes, I am that crazy. And I'm going to basically just add cement into there, just like so. Just like that. So that should now be firmly glued onto the back of that bulkhead. And my biggest concern, as you know from a previous video, was the fact that you could get this glued on there and have the bulkhead not square. But now we know we are square. Um, and also we could end up with a gap. So we don't have that. So I'm just going to quickly brush some extra thin along there. Go back along the other way. Now we have a perfect joint there, which is what I was after. So once again, we can put that to one side and we can leave it to dry because that's what we like to do, isn't it? Is leave things to dry. It means I can spend 15 hours making a one hour video. Hmm. The other thing we need to do is look at this seam. So I'll see you in a sec. Okay, now I've looked at the references and the pictures aren't very good, but it, it certainly doesn't look like there's any raised areas or anything there. So I'm just going to imagine they sort of welded this up and then ground it back because Germans being Germans in World War II, they were, you know, even though they had to get stuff out to fight, you know, to deal with the war machine, they still were perfectionists. They, they had like needle roller bearings in some of their tracks, um, whereas the Russians just had a knock-in pin. You know things like that they were still engineering so I'm, I'm assuming this is all welded together and then beautifully ground back so we probably had some sort of soft edges along here i just want to show you a little trick i use for getting super glue into places like this this is the the vms black thin if you're doing this make sure you've glued this with your extra thin and make sure you've left it at least sort of 12 hours to go off because otherwise if you put the super glue on you're basically forming an airtight container that the glue's sitting in and it will take a very long time to dry and it will sink. So make sure you've had at least 12 hours. I take a radius blade and I just dip the blade in the super glue and then you can basically just put the blade in the groove, as you can see, and run it along the groove and you'll get a very, very neat 
application of the glue into that groove as you can see it's not going everywhere like around the radius is going to be a bit more tricky but I'm sure we'll manage somehow there we go just go around the radius like that today is uh, Tuesday Tuesday the 9th of April I believe it is the 9th um, 2024 and uh, last night I watched Jeff's video his part 9 I think it was and he did the front end of the chassis he watched my video and I think that helped him along and then he used a, a, a slightly different process to end up with the same result I just hope when he does it I mean, by the time you see this, it will already have been answered, but I just hope his rear bulkhead is going to fit square. I don't like the way Daswork have got us fitting that cab floor onto the front. It should be fitting onto the back. It has a positive location. It's square to the back. You can easily set it up square. There's really nothing to come off of on the, um, on the front. Uh, I like the way he's gone with the um, assembling the he's got the radiator and the bulkhead um, all as one so we're going to put some glue around here as well to fill in that gap there we'll probably have to put a sec second application here in a couple of places because it will capillary into the joint there we go There we are. The other thing I want to talk about, in the UK, surely there should be some sort of law against cold corners. I've just had a bloke knocking on the door, ringing the bell, frantically, like it's some kind of emergency or something, just going absolutely crazy, chasing her down the stairs, and open the bloke and open the door, and there's a bloke stood there with his bloody badge on. And I'm just like, oh, I'm not interested, thanks. And, oh, you know, and, and gets the ump. What right has someone got to come and bloody knock on my door, ring my doorbell frantically, disturb my peace, and then try and sell me some shit that I don't want? Surely that's not right. Surely that's not right. I'm getting sick of it. It's bloody phone calls every 10 minutes. Bloody cold callers. Just a joke. They, they don't seem to realise you know, there's a cost of living crisis going on and they're, they come round and think that I want to go and buy a bloody voucher so I can get cheaper meals at a restaurant which is 30 miles away. You know, it's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. And the other thing worth remembering, guys, be very careful with the charity ones. I once fell into this trap. I donated some money to a charity via one of these phone-in things, like Children in Need or whatever. And I then got inundated with phone calls from other charities. They, sh they share your information, so be careful with that. Once they know you're a charitable person, they will come after you. And then when you find out that something like 47% of all the money you give actually goes to charity... You know, it's like, no, I don't think so. I mean, the guy that's just knocked on my door, somebody's paying him, he's not doing it for free. And where are they getting the money from? You and I. Anyway, enough of that. So there we go. We can see that the, the glue is being very neatly applied off the edge of our knife. And uh, we can let it dry, sand it back. I would suggest not using accelerator because accelerator does one of two things it will it will dry it quicker obviously but it will um it also sometimes makes it bubble and you end up with bubbles you have to go over it again because you're using this as a filler and the last thing you want in there is bubbles so there we are right and i can see i'm looking around i'm looking for places where it shrunk back i can just whack some more on now the other place I want to put some 
is just down here on these fenders to blend them in. Just put a thin swipe across there. Just like so. And we'll put some on the bottom as well. And we can sand that almost nice level. And we also want to get some, I just touched the side there, which was stupid. We also want to get some in there, don't we? So we're going to come into that edge there and just put some in, keeping it on the low side. So it's on this position, particular area here, that rear panel is slightly higher up, more towards you than the side. So what we can do is add some super glue to the sides and then we can blend it out. And under a coat of matte grey paint, you'll never know it was anything like it. Just come a little bit wider, just to give us something to feather. There we are. And then here, yeah, that'll just get sanded. I don't think I need. I'm going to put some in there because there may be a line after we've sanded line where the seam is so I'm just going to put some actually on the seam and also we need to make sure we've got it on that top there don't we because there's going to be a step there and on the bottom there we go I just want to put some in that seam try and make this as seamless as possible accuracy wise I don't know if there's supposed to be a seam there or not I certainly can't see anything in the photographs that I've got. So uh, we'll just assume there wasn't. I will assume the Germans were very, very uh, keen to get all the seams hidden. Let's put some more along there. Right, sunk back in. And there we go. We can leave that to dry and uh, try and pick it up some, I know. Put that down, leave that to dry. Oh, we've got glue on there, haven't we? It's going to glue itself to the bench. There we are. So we'll leave that to dry and then we can look at it and uh, sand it back. And I've just touched that in there, haven't I? Dickhead. There we go. Right. Ugh. This is not a model for beginners, guys. It certainly is not a model for beginners. We'll just put that down, sod it. And then what we do is just get a bit of cloth and just wipe the blade off while, it, while the glue's still wet. And your blade will be as good as new. There we are, and I've got all that spare in there to add later. So there we are. Right, see you in a sec. Right, so, <clears throat> found a little issue here. Um, as you can see, I've had to pull quite a large lot of super glue in there. If you remember when I put the cocktail stick on and taped it, obviously what's happened, it's pulled these, this middle of this panel down. So rather than try and unglue it and push it back up and everything, I just thought I'd fill it because as soon as I unglue it, this springs out. So we're back to square one again. So uh, there we are. But um, blending all that out, blending all the top out, it's really, really nice. And uh, we'll give it a cut of paint and see how it looks. I think it'll look absolutely lovely. So um, very, very pleased with this. I may actually use... The LP, what colour is it? Is it LP27? Yes, LP27 German Grey. I may use that because LP paints can go straight on plastic without a primer. But um, it would be nice to prime it, wouldn't it, really? Let's wait and see. Anyway, um, today I've done a review on a beautiful kit, this one here. And you'll probably have already seen it. This is the Border Model German 88mm gun, Flak 36, um, which is stunning and while I was doing the review as you'll probably know if you've already seen it um, I was doing a comparison of the parts of that kit compared to this one and the differences are quite astonishing in the quality that the, the border model is is a lot nicer a lot sharper and crisper you look at this one you look at the parts on here and you think wow these are really nice you know and then you put them next to that one it's like oh okay um you know it's it's it really is quite a difference now um the other thing I noticed, the border model kit is smaller, which doesn't bother me at all. But I've had a look online 
and apparently the barrel was a certain length and I'm assuming that's going to include the breech so it's going to go from the back of the breech to the uh, to the tip of the barrel and it should be 141 millimeters so if we take our barrel here this is not the broader model this is I think it's AFE I was given a kit with parts missing <coughs> excuse me I kept the barrel out of it now the the actual breech is about 16 millimeters long so we've got 123 millimeters plus 60 makes 138 so that makes it three millimeters short of 141 which is what I say it should be okay now this one here is also about 16 millimeters but if we look at the length of this one that's 131 okay well we'll do it this way so we can see what it is it's actually 132 so 132 plus the 16 that makes it 148 so it's too big but it's not just the barrel when you look at the barrel next to that one you can see how much bigger it is um it's everything when you look at the you know the the mounting plinth here this is also bigger so it's almost like this is closer to 30 seconds scale than 35th which is brilliant news for me because that means i want to put it with a lancaster it's going to look great isn't it um i don't know how fussy you are it's certainly not up to 30 seconds scale but it's it's it looks like it's probably above 35th at least on the gun the truck might be perfect but it looks like the gun is slightly oversized um without getting and measuring a real one i can't really uh, can't really confirm but uh if anybody happens to have an 88 millimeter in their back garden or something they'd like to measure up some parts i'll check them with the border and this one and uh, we'll go from there but uh there we are so that's going to be left to dry and that's going to be sanded we also have this which is all clamped up and everything so i'm going to remove these clamps from here and hopefully this has been glued together for about three or four hours now hopefully um this will stay together nicely that's coming off the steering column there you can see there we're all glued up and everything that's nice and solid so what I might do, just to strengthen the joint, I might put a couple of little bits, blocks of plastic in here or in here where it won't be seen, just to improve, just to make the surface area bigger so it's a bit of a stronger joint because it's probably going to be quite easy to snap, but uh, actually it's probably going to be all right. But now what we've got is a cab which is nice and square to the floor. So what we can do is we can now remove these blocks down here which are such a pain because they keep wanting to pop out anyway so we can remove these and now our datum will no longer be these blocks I'm going to get a fresh blade in here our datum will no longer be these blocks our datum will be the actual mud guards and those lower side panels that we fitted so that should all be good there we go that's that one gone so we can come in with a stick just sand away those blocks there's nothing left there we go now we should be able to put this on the chassis and now we can Play with it and get it where we want. I'm going to slide the steering column through there. Make sure it goes through the dashboard. Come on, go through the dashboard, please. This could be easier said than done. There we go. So now that can sit on there we can get the chassis central and we can push it up to there to those panels there and that's it we're good to go so now we can just put the body where we want it doesn't have to be relying on those two little nubbins and we can get it all centered and just measure it all up and everything make sure we're happy with it's in the center that's not in the center at the moment i can tell you that that's more like it and yeah, we can uh, basically now do what we want and fit it where we want to fit it rather than be dictated by those blocks that keep wanting to pop out. 
So there we are. So the next thing I'm going to do after I've got all this sanding done is actually get this glued to that. So we're going to have this one piece body that we can paint and weather and do everything as one rather than having all these separate little units. And that way we won't have any joints to worry about and we can deal with that joint in there. The only real worry we're going to have with this, this back end, is the floor, I think, because when it goes in, it's sort of... It does kind of go together, but it's, again, it's a very, very finicky fit. But um, there we are. That's, it's actually got to sit into those recesses. There's, there's recesses in here and these the, these little tabs here have got to go in those tiny, tiny recesses, which is once again, it's just not working because it's also bloody tiny. But we will get it in the end. We'll get it all clamped up and then glued together. So there we are. Right now I just wait for that super glue to dry before I can sand it down. And then we can go on with getting that together. I've been talking to Luke Carswell, him of um, of Black Rifle Model Works, and he's told me about an, uh, a Citadel product which is fantastic for rust. So I've just messaged him and said, what did you say it was again? Because I didn't write it down stupidly. And I'm going to try that out. I'm going to get some and try it out because uh, he said it's absolutely amazing for a base for rust so they could just put some pigments on and stuff. But um, yeah, this is really coming together. I've got a feeling now, um, because we've got to this point where I'm waiting for everything to dry, um, like I don't want to start messing with this for a good few hours. You know, this, this has been glued about four hours, maybe six hours. I don't want to mess with that until I absolutely know it's solid. In fact, I can see a bit of a, a gap there. I'm just going to put a brush of extra thin down in there just to let it get in that gap and do its thing. So um, there we go. And uh, yeah, we need to make sure that's absolutely dried and solid before we start messing with that. Uh, and then we can um, push on from there. But I think I'm going to make a start on the gun. Which so is we've done that now. Um, just added some strip in there just to sort of double up on the contact area, just to make it all a bit tougher, really. Um, so uh, the other thing I found is this bulkhead here on the bottom comes up against this raised cross member here. So it can't go any more forward than that anyway, unless we remove some of that material from there. But I'm not, not going to start doing that because I don't think we need to. So I've checked this first square, give it a little tiny tweak. Um, and we've got a dead square interface between there and there because we've got a door going on here. So it needs to be nice and square. Um, which now means that these two legs here don't quite touch the chassis. Uh, if I grab a straight edge, You'll be able to see here that they are just slightly off the chassis legs. So that's obviously because of all the multitude of parts that are going together. So um, so there we are. But I've, I've completely built it the wrong way round, so I can't blame Das Work for that. It's my fault. So... Come on, go through the bloody dashboard, you swine. So now we should be able to fit this on here. He says. Just like so, that will slide up to there. There we go. So that will sit on the chassis now. And we've got that bulkhead up against, up against that cross member. It's all fitting lovely at the front. So everything is good. We have got a tiny gap here it looks a lot bigger than it is because because it's the gray and the black but um it's it's tiny tiny i can actually close it up look so i'm not really worried about that too much yeah the mud guard's going to go in there anyway um i'm not sure i did have the mud guards here they got here they are so these mud guards have got these legs on them Let's quickly get one off and have a look and see how it fits. You've got these legs on them. I'm going to have to get those sprue nibs off of there so that the uh, that it can fit into the into the weight to the um, side panel properly. 
So that one is going to be that side. So if I can get this all positioned correctly, just like so, now that's going to go in there. There's a slot in there and that's going to go into that slot. fits up like that so you can see how it fits in the in the bottom root of that cab down here where my thumb is there so uh, yeah well very nice I thought it was gonna be very weak on those fenders but it's clearly not gonna be so uh, there we go right so I'll let that dry I'm just gonna quickly check for square again that side's good that side's good so we're good to go let that dry let those bits of plastic in there dry. I may actually put some of that black VMS in there as well. That will um, that will give it a bit more area as well. But it does once it's all fitted, it's fine. But it's just um, while I'm working on it. Right. So that's still not dry. I'm not going to use accelerator because it'll probably make it shrink. Let's put those screws in the box. Let's have a look at this gun. All right. So look at it. Step 28. Here. We're starting with the actual support of the gun. I've got all the parts off the sprue and cleaned them all up except for one. Um, if you remember when I did the border model um, 88mm, these parts here, these main supports, they have these um, rivet or bolt heads along the bottom. The border model went to the trouble of actually slide molding, but what Daswork have done, or Tackham have done, they've got this, this seam across the bottom, which is exactly what I was talking about when I saw the border model parts. And um, it's a pain. So what we're going to have to do, it seems on here, what we do is sand them down and then we'll we'll actually make a, a little mark in the surface where they are and then we can decide what we're going to do so what I'm going to do is first of all is just come along and just remove most of them so I can just see where they were and then I'll go under a magnifier and what I'll do is I'll pick out the centers of all of these and just make that mark just like so. Looks like my eyes are actually working today. Let's just make a pin mark in it like that with the end of a pointed tool. And then uh, there's one there. So obviously there's going to be one there as well, sort of in the middle, yeah? Well, there's going to be another two perhaps. One there. And there's going to be one there. There we go. Okay, and these are on the bottom of the gun, but if you're going to have the gun up in the air, obviously pointing up, then you're going to see them. Now that we've got those there, we can uh, just sand away until we get rid of that step and the seam and everything. And then we should have a little white mark where they were, where there's full of sand and dust. And we just go with our pointed tool again, pick up on it and just make it a bit deeper so we can still see it. And then we can decide what we're going to do. We can... Draw them out and put some rivets in there or whatever. And, uh, just like we did on the chassis. Use some of those lovely Anise rivets. And there we go. That's that done. So that's them all in place. So we are ready for the assembly. And there's lots of little tiny bits on here. And I probably shouldn't have got them off the sprue because they're just going to get broken. Um, so what we really ought to do is get on, not put those bits on there. We're going to have to put this bit in here because it goes on the inside. Then we can go and add all this. And then we're going to add the actual barrel as well and the breech and everything. So I think probably we'll leave those bits off and I'll put those in my, um, my plastic pot over here. So we've got these little parts here. So there's L20. We'll fit that one, so we won't fit those bits. They're, going to, they're just going to get snapped off. You see, it's like fitting silly little bits like this. It's just daft. So what I'll do is I'll put a little red mark, dum, 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 and then we'll know. We'll leave that one off as well, and then we'll know what we've left off. Uh, also, on the inside of these, there were Z pins that were a pain in the bum. So uh, we're going to have to try and scrape over those and not lose too much detail. Um, the border model one, to be fair, has uh, ejector pin marks in here, but no Z pins, which 
keeps the wads really both as bad as one another. But it would appear, as I said just now, the this is overscale, which is brilliant <laughs> for having it on display with a Lancaster. It's brilliant. So there we go. Right. Now then, we've got that part there. So we've got K15 here, which is going to go in there, I'm guessing. Again, it's as clear as mud, these instructions. You see, it's showing... Showing this here going into there, but it's got that there going into the center. So, where on earth is that going? Have we got another picture of it with that piece in? Nope, nope, nope. No, great. So, where are the I mean, this is what annoys me. Where is it going? There's no... Oh, okay. I can see now. There's a cutout under there. So this piece here, which appears to do absolutely nothing, is going to go in there like that. Or does it line up? It doesn't stick out the back, although we'd see it sticking out down there. It doesn't line up with those things. Oh, it's just bollocks in it. It's just... These instructions are just rubbish. Bloody diabolical. Okay, and then this piece here, this little tidy piece here, K20, it's got a square lug on one side. So what I'm going to do is put a drop of cement in there, which will probably dry out by the time I get to it. Okay, just drop that in there somehow. Ooh. They go to all the fuss of this detail. And have all this light, tiny little bits of fine detail inside underneath the gun where you're hardly ever going to see it. And then put bloody great ejector pin marks in there. Make sure that goes in square. Oh dear, come on. we are. If we fit the other half. Okay, we'll have to work fast so it stays soft. Uh, so we've got K13 is going to go onto that pin there. Look how massive that pin is. Look at that huge pin. This is what's going to support the gun. And we've got that and going into that hole there. So we've got a pin here. And a hole here and this is going to go in there and in there like so and then we've got this piece here which is going to go in the bottom here I'm guessing I'm guessing that's where it's going to sit like that. Put some cement on there Got a sprue nib on there, still haven't got rid of. Naughty boy. There we go. So it goes that way round. Oh, Christ. Do you know what? This is not enjoyable. This is just junk. It's like guess where it all goes, isn't it? It's just 
Let's have a guess at where this part goes. Yee! And now this half's going to go on here. So that pin's going to go up in there. That hole's going to go into there. That's going to go across there. Just like so. So we'll grab a clothes peg or two. We can peg that together there and we can put some cement down there. Now we're going to have a lot of filling to do with that horrible joint because it's not very nice. And make sure that gear has gone in on the pins and the holes and everything, which it has. So we can put some, some more cement down here. Can I have some cement on the brush, please? Thank you. Get some more cement down there. Get some more down there. And then that little bit we put in there is just going to get pushed back. And I'm going to put a drop of cement around that to make sure it's gone in. We'll get another clothes peg and put it there. And now this one's going to be tricky because we can't clamp it. So we're going to get my quick set in. And run some quick setting into there. Because that has got to form a radius. There we go. That actually fits lovely there. It fits really nice. The rest of it is garbage. So we're going to have lots of seed work to do down here. Um, glad I didn't fit those rivets before I assembled it. So what we've got, it will work out. We'll do the rivets afterwards, I expect. Um, and then this part here is going to sit in there. Okay, so this is going to sit on that little patch there with the angled part forwards. There we are. So that's all very nice. This is all trying to pull itself apart back here. I don't know why. When all those fails, just stick more glue in there and give it a push. And there we are. So there's the detail down inside the breech, which is probably never going to be seen. And then we've got some seams to deal with on there. So once again, we're going to have to stop and let this dry. And then we'll put some super glue in there. Um, I think what I will do is go straight on and fit this part here, H50. Uh, this is H. Where is 50? There it is. It's the last part on there. So we'll go on and fit that on the end. Because uh, that's going to kind of finish the end off and give us a an end if you like to the to the seam but then saying that these little bits are going to be sticking out everywhere and I'm not sure that's going to be very handy for sanding it so this is going to go on the end that way up yeah it will help because it gives us an end so what we'll do is we'll Put some cement in there. Put that in place just like that.
there we go so that's that looks a bit weird because it's got these sort of offset little bits on it that are going to go into that piece there k21 which look, is, looks like it's going to be a nightmare for seam clean up around the middle so uh there we are so that's our gun together so we'll wait for that to dry and we'll get some super glue on there and then if in fact that seam there doesn't matter because this is going over the top so when that goes over the top how much of it are we going to see none of it the tiny little although we've got the breech going over the top of the back so it's only this under here we've got to deal with not that there so that's cool right i think we'll call that a day for this one this has been part eight and when i come back we'll get stuck into this gun again and we'll also get some more work done on here we're going to get this all glued into here um and we're going to get the uh the uh, this back will sand it down while we're off camera and everything so yeah we should be in part nine we should be getting some greeblies on getting these doors on and start thinking about getting some primer down and seeing how all these joints look and then once we've got all that together we've got a solid lump we can then start thinking about detail painting and stuff get it overall painted first and then start doing the detail painting but in the meantime i just want to let that set all right so i'll see you all soon soon for part nine thank you for watching um hope you're enjoying it uh i'm not at the moment probably shouldn't have got that border model kit because I've seen how much better that is how much better the gun is than this one um, and how much more thought has gone into the design as well so there we are right I'll see you all soon thank you for watching bye for now